I've made over a million dollars day trading in the stock market and I've been trading for over five years. I want to teach you the five top lessons that helped me become a profitable trader. So let's get right into it. All right, so let's go over the top five essential lessons that I think every trader should know if you're trying to become a profitable trader. So lesson number one is planning realistic goals. In order to become a successful trader, it is important to set realistic goals. This means setting achievable targets that are based on your skills, experience, and resources. To set realistic trading goals, you need to consider your risk tolerance, capital, and time horizon. By setting realistic goals, you can focus on achieving them and avoid making impulsive decisions based on emotions or short-term market fluctuations. What do I mean by this? If you're just starting trading or if you've only been trading for a year or even two years and you think you're going to start making $500,000, $1 million or even $100,000 consistently every single year, you're mistaken, right? It's just not happening. With your experience, you need to develop more skills to become a better trader. So this may be that you have to join masterminds or courses or discords or even learning for free on the internet. Like you guys know, I don't have anything to sell you. So I'm just telling you right now, but do whatever you want to do, but you need to set goals that are realistic. And I'm telling you right now, trying to make your first $500,000 or your first $100,000 a year in your first year is just not realistic. Now with just sizing into one trade and hoping for the best in gambling, yeah, maybe you could do it, but that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to become either full-time traders or consistent enough traders where it can be a big portion of our side income. When you're setting these goals, it's really important that you set a time horizon for yourself. What this means is don't give yourself six months or three months or one month. Give yourself much longer, a year, two years, three years. This is because most traders won't be profitable in their first year or in the first six months and they'll be like, you know what, trading's not for me, I'm done. And that's why most traders fail, right? 90% of traders fail because they give up too quick. You need to set a time horizon that you know you can comfortably trade and not have that thought in the back of your head, am I wasting time? Should I do something else? Should I move on? Is drop shipping for me, right? Like, should I become this? Should I do this? That's what kills most traders, right? You need to really understand that to become a profitable trader, it is going to take you a lot of time and it's going to take you capital. How much capital it takes you though is really up to you. What I tell most traders is when you're first starting, please don't start with a lot of capital. This is because most traders come in and they try to make too much money. They'll put in their whole life savings in their trading account. Or let's say you're still young right now, you'll put in, you know, however much you made from that part-time job you had, right? And the problem in this is you're most likely going to end up losing it because you have no skills or experience to actually trade that money. So always start off with a small amount when you're first starting and then size up as you get the skills and experience needed. Number two, the trading system. A trading system is a set of rules and guidelines that traders use to make decisions about when to enter and exit trades. The system can be based on technical analysis, fundamental analysis, or a combination of both. It should be designed to fit your personality, risk tolerance, and trading goals. A good trading system should have a clear entry and exit signal and you should always backtest your system to ensure that it performs well in different market conditions and adjust it if needed. Consistency in following the system is the key to your success. So a lot of people think that a trading system needs to be changed every week, every two weeks based on what's happening. But what I'm here to tell you is once you have a trading system, yes, you're going to have to refine it as the market keeps progressing. And if it changes, of course, but you don't have to refine it every week. A trading system, the one I've been using personally, I've refined it a little bit, right? I've refined it a little bit every single year, but realistically, it's still the same trading system that I've been using since I started becoming a profitable trader, right? So get a trading system that aligns with your personality. I have a lot of videos on my channel about different strategies that you can use, but look for one that aligns with your personality and your goals. And the thing with the trading system is maybe my personality doesn't align with your personality. Maybe you're more of a swing trader where you need more time to actually carry out a trade. And that's completely fine, right? There's thousands of free videos on YouTube to help you find that trading setup. What's really crucial about a trading system though, is you need to backtest it, right? You can have a trading system that has a 90% win rate and a decent risk to reward, but you're still going to be an unprofitable trader if you don't backtest your system because you're not going to have 
confidence in the system and confidence is key in anything you're doing in life that can be from just in life in general business trading relationships whatever you need confidence okay and so if you don't have confidence in your system most likely you're not going to be a profitable trader so you really need to backtest your system to understand in the previous data if you just followed your system and didn't fomo trade or anything and just followed your strict system would you be profitable in the long run and most likely this data will show that you would be profitable if you strictly only followed your system number three risk management so risk management is another very important thing when it comes to trading always trade your r multiple never your pnl traders often lose too much on one trade and win too little on the next trade which makes them lose money in the long term. Risk management is something I preach about all the time. And the reason I preach about it is because it's so important. Trading is a risky business, right? Because we are essentially gambling, right? The only difference between us trading and actually just gambling on, let's say, in the casino is we have the probability in our favor where we trade like a casino, right? The casino doesn't win money every single day. Over a long period of time, the casino will win money. Why? Because the probability is in their favor. So if you trade without your R multiple and you're just trading and gambling and trying to buy these FOMO trades or these earning trades, in the long run, you're not going to be a profitable trader because on one trade, you might win $500, but then on the next trade, you're going to lose $1,000 and then you're going to win $200 and then you're going to lose $500 and overall, you're going to be net negative in the long run. So that's why it's super important to have a very strict R multiple that you try to trade every single time and at least have your R multiple depending on your win rate at a one to two risk to reward. That's what I like to do personally, but depending on your win rate, like I said, you can either have that lower or much higher. Number four, trading indicators are delayed. So while technical indicators can be useful tools for traders, it's important to recognize that they are delayed. In fact, relying too heavily on indicators can actually be detrimental to a trader's success. One of the main issues with trading indicators is that they are based on past price data, which may not accurately predict future market movements. I was once there just like you, right? If you're a new trader, you're trying to trade that MACD RSI, you're trying to see when the MACD crosses the RSI or you're trying to you know find the holy grail of indicators i've been there i even bought an indicator that was like 500 dollars back in the day right because i thought it was going to be the holy grail and i just had to buy it at the buy signal and sell it at the sell signal and it was going to be that easy it's just not going to happen and i'm telling you right now don't waste your money on indicators really focus on price action okay focus on candlesticks okay focus on the actual key levels, psychological levels, right? And just back test that trading system like we've been talking about. Indicators may be a great tool of just getting like an overall sense of the market. So for example, on my chart, I have VWAP and volume. That's it. That's the only indicators I have. I barely use the volume and I barely use VWAP now either, right? The reason I have those indicators is because I used to use them before, but with large caps, especially with the large caps I trade on a daily basis, I don't really need to look at volume too much unless it's a news day. And with VWAP, I've just always had VWAP on my chart and that's why I'm just used to VWAP on my chart and it just looks too weird for me when I don't have VWAP. What I realized is trading indicators are really just a waste of time. If I focused on just mastering price action and understanding how candlesticks form, understanding why levels form, understanding market trend, I would be a much better trader, much, much faster, right? I could have become profitable probably a year before I did if I just realized that trading indicators for me are not helpful. And finally, the fifth lesson is the market constantly changes. The market is constantly changing and you need to be aware of these changes in order to stay ahead. You need to keep updated with the latest news and trends in the market and adjust accordingly. It is important for you to understand that what worked yesterday may not work today. This doesn't mean if it doesn't work for one week, you go ahead and change your complete trading strategy. You simply should not trade that week. So there's two lessons in here, but let's really talk about this. So the market is always changing. We know this, right? We had the COVID market. That was a market where you bought anything and it was going, it was flying, right? You would make a hundred percent, a thousand percent overnight sometimes, right? But in this market currently, in the previous three months, we've had a lot of chop, we've had a lot of range, and there's really not that much solid momentum. Now, this didn't mean that I was going to go and change my complete system. What this meant was I was trading much less, I was trading much more selectively. And if you were my previous Discord, you understood that I only took one to two trades max on a day. 
And I still do that to this day. I only take one to two good trades max and that's it. I call it a day. And on most days, if there's like too much news or a lot of volatility with Jay Powell, I just won't trade. Okay, it's that simple. I don't want to change my trading strategy. I don't need to change my trading strategy either. On days that I feel are too volatile or too news dependent or there's no volume, I just won't trade that day. And that's completely fine. You don't have to trade every single day especially when the market is changing or if you're in a range and there's no momentum depending on what type of trader you are of course you don't need to trade in that specific market so those are the five lessons that helped me the most to become a profitable trader i hope you guys can take these lessons take notes and understand why these are so important and how you can become a profitable trader if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to leave a like and follow me on instagram and twitter and i'll see you guys next week with a brand new video